What's going on, Washington fans? Welcome to the JTFB show. That's right, the show. Um, I'm Josh Taylor. For those that don't know, if you're new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button and like if you enjoy the video. Uh, we got a couple things to talk about on uh, on this show, and that is some front office moves that continue to happen, some impressive moves that people around the league are noticing, and really um, just big-time respectful moves by Josh Harris and Adam Peters, just adding a, a gauntlet of big, respected names um, to not only just the front office, but also – and the scouting department, we'll talk about that. And then um, second half of the video, talk about some training camp news. That's right. Washington has an opponent for training camp. Uh, Washington, uh, as you know, in the past has done some joint practices. They did it last year with the Ravens. And they will be traveling for a practice this training camp. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, but before I jump into it, just a little little house cleanup, house you know, talk here. Um, just kind of like... Just been thinking lately, like you know, what I want to do, kind of end game stuff, like what what all I want to do with this, and I kind of want to just kind of move into more of a a show setting, not just like a hey, welcome to YouTube. I'm going to talk about this today, and I'm still going to put out like you know videos of like certain you know topics, like film breakdowns, or you know something big happens, I'll talk about it. But there's like I kind of want to go towards more of a show setting where it's like hey, I'm going to talk about this, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to start getting some guests on here, you know, now that my schedule's kind of cleaned up a little bit. Life's been busy lately, so I apologize. I know I haven't really done much like the last week. Um, it's been like a week since I've uploaded a video, but still, like I said, life, life's been busy. Life's been hectic um, with like other work. But I think like big picture wise, like I think eventually I'm going to come back to the East Coast, eventually probably like Northern Virginia, something like around where I can be like closer to the team, closer to my family, obviously. Um like in the future, like it's not really like the next next few months, but probably next season. Um, but I think like I think like big picture wise, I, I want like a show. I want to get some kind of like commercial space, um, or maybe like a house, like a basement or something like that, and just turn it into like a, a studio where it'll be like more of a show setting, not just you know here. Um, but this is good for now. Like I, I enjoy it. This is fine. But like just thinking long term wise, let me know what y'all think. Like I said, I'm still going to drop like individual like idea videos, but I want to do like more, try to do like, uh, you know, twice a week, maybe three times a week, but more of like a routine time and day where I can just, and things happen, of course, but just like a more of a show setting where I just go through some topics. I'm going to start adding some more stuff to the screen, adding some more, you know, breakdowns of like what's coming up on the show, stuff like that. That's coming. Don't worry. Um, but let me just know your thoughts. Do you like the idea? Do you hate it? Do you like whatever, Josh? Shut up. Just get to talking about what you're going to talk about, whatever. Um, but then also promoting like, some sponsors and stuff like that more. And by the way, shout out to, to Breaking Tea. Finally got this thing in, the W with the feather shirt, the Dan Quinn shirt. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit different than what he had. You know, Breaking Tea can only do it so much. But I love this thing. It looks good. feels great. I gave one away on um, X. Um to a follower. Uh, so I'll be doing some more stuff like that. Obviously going to training camp, getting things signed, giving stuff away on here, but then also social media. So follow me if you don't already at Josh Taylor FB. And like I said, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, but let me just know what your, what your thoughts are. Like, would you like that show standing, having more guests on here, kind of going through topics, discussing certain things, not just like welcome to YouTube kind of video, which I don't mind that I'm still going to do it. But I kind of just want to get into more of a show. I want, like, I want to have a full time show. That that is like the big picture. Um, so no much, let me know what y'all think. Um, but speaking of big picture, Washington has been. Um, we saw this coming after the draft. We kind of figured there would be changes in the front office um, to a certain extent. But then also, like I said, the scouting department. We've seen a lot of scouts and you know player personnel kind of um, you know figures whether their contract was up, we just didn't bring them back, or we kind of replaced them. Uh, but kind of started out with Washington hiring um, Dwayne Jones out of Atlanta. Um, he served with the Ravens and Saints as well over the last few years, but he's a national scout. And, it, and a lot of people, that was according to at Inside the League, by the way, um, Neil Stratton, who's been like really up to date on all of these hires that Washington's been um, having, like I said, within the personnel department, within the scouting department, but also front office. Uh, but Dwayne Jones, a lot of people were talking super high about him 
you know, being a part of drafting guys like Michael Thomas, being a part of drafting Lamar Jackson and a lot of other big names. Um, and more recently, he was assistant uh, director of college scouting for the Falcons, you know, getting B. John Robinson, getting, you know, Kyle Pitts, and people like, oh, whatever. They had some solid depth guys there as well. But like I said, before that, being under the great Ozzie Newsome, shout out to uh, Ozzie Newsome, Roll Tide, being a part of some Ravens drafts in the past with Lamar Jackson and so on. Um, so having a big name like that come in as a, as a national scout for us, um, it's big. And we, we kind of figured that Adam Peters was going to start getting more of his guys in here. They've hired, they hired a couple other people. They brought someone over from San Francisco. I forgot what his name was, but it was like last week. It's kind of like quiet move. It wasn't too, um, too big of a, of a, a move. Um, but then they also finalized today that Washington has officially named David Blackburn as the team's director of player personnel. He has worked with the Ravens for the past 17 years, mostly as director of college scouting. It's kind of been talked about over the last few days, whatever. Um, but it was made official today. And that's another guy that was a big name that people like, Holy smokes. And you know, if, with these kind of people, you don't really hear, like, it's not like they're a, a household name. Like you don't hear about it all the time. Like, Oh, Washington got like, like Adam Peters. Oh my gosh. Like we knew who he was. We knew who Dan Quinn was. Um, but you don't hear a, a lot about these guys. Um, you know, they're not like the popular names, whatever, but still he's been with the Ravens for the last 17 seasons. He was a 2021 Bart list honoree, which, you know, it's pretty much like a big, big award. Um, for like front office, you know, for director of college scouting in 2023. And he's going to be the new director of player personnel for Washington. So once again, just going after the best of the best, the Ravens, how, how well they've drafted over the last few years, how well they've built that roster for success long-term Washington is just going after the big name guys. And honestly, probably the biggest name. It wasn't even, um, you know, those two guys, it was Brandon Sosna, who a lot of people were like, whoa, this is a big hire. He's super young. He's like 31 years old, by the way. Um, but bringing him here as the senior vice president of football operations, that's a big, that's a big title. That's a big job. He's going to report directly to Adam Pierce. So Adam Schefter said it in uh, his post. Uh, Sasa spent the last two seasons with the Lions as their senior director of football administration, overseeing Detroit's strategic planning, salary cap management, and serving as their chief contract negotiator. So that's a lot. Um, strategic planning, whether that's the draft, whether that's you know how they spend their money, but then also salary cap management, and then also their chief contract negotiator. That's big. That's a lot of responsibility. Um, but there was a couple of videos that I saw, I forgot what the owner of the, the lion's name is, but even their GM talked about brand sauce. And they're like, I want to talk about him, like how big he's been, how successful he's been over the last, you know, few, few seasons for us, whether if it was getting free agents here, keeping guys here, new contracts, um, you know, moving TJ Hawkinson, people are like, Whoa, that's kind of big. But then replacing them with, you know, Laporta getting Jared Goff, um, locking him in when, you know, when people gave up on him and, you know, obviously last season was a phenomenal season for them making the playoffs, uh, you know, a deep run definitely should be back in the running next year. Um, they're set up to succeed, but, um, but Adam Peters said that he will be reporting directly to GM Adam Peters. Uh, Sosna will be the club's lead contract negotiator, which is big. Um, he will oversee a number of football operation departments, including analytics, health and performance, and football administration. He will also play a major role in strategy around roster construction, the salary cap, and CBA. So that's a lot. He's got a lot of responsibility. Um, but from you know the the sound of it, everyone said this is a big time hire. This is like even people from like you know the Cowboys fan base. Eagles fan base, they're like, all right, we have to give some credit to Josh Harris because he came in here and he got to work. And we knew 
once you know he still like we bought the team and everything realistically we knew there was only a certain amount of things he could do last year like this we knew that this year would have been the year where the big changes happen so obviously the the first big change that happened is Josh Harris pur- purchases the team goes through last season kind of sits back looks how everything you know plays out and watches from afar but then he brings in Adam Peters the best of the best now you have Brandon Sosna, Senior Vice President of Football Operations. You add David Blackburn, Director of Player Personnel. He added, not too long ago, Lance Newmark, Assistant GM. Mark Mayhew was already here. Eugene Shin was a, a recent, you know, not like last week, but it was like the last few months addition. Senior Vice President of Football Strategy. Um, also added a Senior VP of Football Initiatives with Dave Grardy. Um, So Josh Harris did what needed to be done, like clean house and got Adam Peters here and let Adam Peters and got some outside. Um, I don't want to say help, but outside perspective and, and strategies from some big, you know, we, we talked about the, the Bob Myers bringing him in to, to help find, um, you know, the GM and, and help do like, um, you know, head coaching search and stuff like that. And then Adam, like I said, Adam Peters comes in, gets right to work. There was a lot of moves like right away when the season ended, There was no wasted time, but there's always been a plan. And it's just so refreshing to know that Washington is now the place where people want to be. Adam Peters wanted to be here because of the salary cap we had, because of the history we have here, because of the draft capital that we had. And he has a great draft. He gets the future quarterback. He gets some really good value picks that I think a lot of people are sleeping on. Um and then I think he had a phenomenal free agency, bringing some vets here. But then how the contracts were really put together, a lot of three-year contracts for that first and second year are really affordable to where you could sign the most guys in the free agency period. We had the most roster turnover out of any team in the NFL this, this offseason. And then also last year with starters. We have the most starters last year that are not on a team currently. Last year are not on a team right now. That's very telling. It's not a shot at those guys. It is just it, it, it's just a visual of how much change is here. And I'm going to do a video coming up of top five storylines for the season that I'm taking a look at, and I'll give you a little sneak peek. One of them is how much different this team looks because of the changes in the front office, but because m- mainly the changes on the field and in the roster. So Josh Harris wastes no time, gets busy, fills up, I mean, just an A-plus roster of front office, executive management, football operations with Adam Peters, Brandon Sosna, David Blackburn, Lance New- Lance Newmark, Martin Mayhew still here, Rob Rogers, and Eugene Shen. In my opinion, just it's a master class. We are a respectful organization once again. And that is refreshing. And people, people are going to kind of brush this off. The, you know, the people are like, oh, we're still the same Washington. They're going to brush this off, and that's fine. But this translates to results big time. This translates to wins on the field. This translates into a winning culture. Will Washington finally look like one of those teams that we see when we watch other teams on Sundays? Washington has a bye week. We're going to watch... We're going to watch the Chiefs. We're going to watch the Eagles. We're going to watch the 49ers. Washington is finally going to look like those teams. We're always like, why do we not look like that? Why does our team not look like these guys? Even with backups, even with guys we've never heard of, they play well because they have a respectable organization. So big-time moves in the front office. And speaking of big-time moves, This show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the fastest and easiest way to play all of your favorite fantasy games. Even in an area where you cannot participate in other sports books, Underdog Fantasy has you covered where you can still get in on all of the football action. You can draft your fantasy drafts in any sport that you want. Maybe you're you're into the NBA playoffs right now. Can't say that I am. I'm a Grizzlies fan been out of it for a while or maybe you're watching nhl baseball seasons ramped up you know full swing right now you can get in on all the action on 
any of those. And football's coming up. Football's right around the corner. So you can draft your players that you want in the fantasy draft, or you can play my favorite fantasy game, the Pick'em. Now, what is Pick'em? Pick'em is a single-player fantasy game based on player stats. How do you play, Josh? You pick the higher or lower of stats of any player that you like. You can choose between two and five player stats. And for the more picks you have, the higher the odds, up to 20 times your money in a single night. And my favorite thing is the Pick'em Insurance. It's where you can get lower odds, but if you miss one pick, you still win. So play now on Underdog Fantasy, the Pick'em Contest. They already have NFL season futures up right now. So you can pick higher or lower on Jaden Daniel stats with passing yards, rushing yards, passing touchdowns. Get them while they're at a good value. Now, Underdog Fantasy is not available in every state. Apologize about that. That's not me. So make sure Underdog Fantasy is available in your state of residence. You see me down there in Texas. Like I said, I can't do certain things on certain sports books here in Texas, but I can play Underdog Fantasy, and I can put together some contests and win some money. If you're over there in Virginia, they got you. North Carolina, South Carolina. Maybe you're out in California as a Washington fan. You can still play Underdog Fantasy, like I said, any sport. Now, if you sign up today, claim your special pick plus up to $250 first-time deposit. You don't want to miss out on that, guys. So use my promo code JTFB and sign up today. Maybe get a little practice in before the football season. Throw some higher, lower props together on the NBA playoffs. There's a couple ones I like. I, I, I could throw some NBA ones together, but y'all know, once NFL season starts, I always post my plays on social media. So sign up today on Underdog Fantasy. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy for making football season even more exciting. Can't wait. It's coming. Don't you worry. Heck, preseason. I'm gonna be throwing some, I'm gonna be throwing some pickums together, guys. Don't worry. But shout out to Underdog. Sign up today, JTFB. If you have signed up and haven't deposited, you can still use my code promo JTFB. Get that special pick and that cash bonus as well. Now. Let's get to some other news. Came out the other day. Y'all know I love training camp. Training camp is one of my favorite things. I will be in Virginia tw at least twice for training camp. I will be getting my miles in. That is for sure. Um, Mike McDaniel, according to um, at David Fronos underscore, said Mike McDaniel says the Dolphins will have joint practices with all three preseason opponents Two practices with Atlanta and one practice with Tampa Bay and our Washington Commanders. Now, do y'all remember joint practices with the Ravens and how chippy it was? Do you remember that? We're over here watching on our phone, watching on our laptop, whatever, watching those live broadcasts. I remember we were getting into it with Raven fans. They were talking trash. We were talking trash on the broadcast. Like, oh, show y'all, y'all aren't showing the offense. You're not showing your wide receivers what's going on. You're not, they're not showing much of y'all secondary what's going on. And uh, it was fun. I loved it. Uh, obviously, there was some chippy moments. You remember, like, the Mark Andrews incident um, and everything that happened there. Um, I like that. You know, it's one thing practicing against your teammates every day, it's something different when you got someone with a different helmet on. With a different jersey on. And I know it's it's training camp. And I know it's preseason football, but I don't care. Still, this is such a new team. Like, like I just talked about not too long ago, the roster turnover and how different this team is. Practices like this are going to get, get your team together a little bit more. This is a bonding experience for this team. Like I said, you're hitting each other. You're only doing but so much. When you got Tyreek Hill lined up across from you, when you got Odell, you got my boy Waddle lined up across from you. You got Jalen Ramsey. They got some dudes, Chop Robinson. You got Tua, some really good running backs. You're going to get tested. But also this, this fire is going to show up. And we saw that with the Ravens. It got chippy. Because you're hitting, you're hitting your teammates. You're sick of it. You want to hit somebody else. And it's finally happening. So we're traveling to Miami. They said it's going to be in Miami. Um, it's before that preseason game. 
um, which I think is the third preseason game. I can't remember 100%. Um, I'm going to say it is the third preseason game. Let me check the schedule real quick while I got the, the website up. But they said the practice is going to be before the preseason game. Um, of course, it's not on here. Oh, well. Um, but I want to say it's the third one. I, I think it's the third one. I think who do we have? The Jets, Dolphins, and somebody else? I can't remember who the preseason is. Oh, here we go. Jets, Dolphins, Patriots. I think the Dolphins is the second game. My apologies. Second game, it looks like, according to the schedule, which is on my phone, my wallpaper. I should know by now who our preseason opponent is. I know every other game by heart. Um, but it looks like second preseason game is the Dolphins. So it's right there in the middle, which is great. So you're going to have some practices first. Then you're going to go to Miami, practice against another team. Then you get to go back home and correct some things, get things right before that final preseason game, which we're probably going to rest everybody. But still, it is it is a great team-building exercise to go against another team to actually hit somebody else. And I remember, man, just growing up, training camp in Richmond, whether if it was the Jets um, or the Patriots. The Patriots was probably one of my favorite joint practices. I remember meeting... Jimmy Garoppolo got his autograph, you know, just seeing him, but also seeing Dante Hightower, which is one of my favorite Alabama players all time. Um, and then Vince Wolfork. He walked over to where I was. And I was like, holy smokes. This is one of the biggest human beings I've ever seen. Um, ridiculous. But, I mean, you know, the, the Patriots were the Patriots. You know, highly respected organization. Super Bowl winning. I mean, they were right in the thick of it all. Um, but just like seeing our team go up against them, it was great. Like, it, those were exciting games because once again, it wasn't like, or as exciting practices. Cause it's not like these boring, like walkthroughs. You're like, all right, you know, Jane Daniels is going to throw the ball up and they're not going to have pads on or it's going to be whatever. Um, it, it wasn't like that. So I'm, I'm excited. Cause it's going to be like, Okay, Jaden Daniels is going to be throwing to Terry McLaurin, who's got Jalen Ramsey on him. You know, it's it's a more intense practice. I think that's big. I think that's needed. Um, yeah, of course, there's like the injury aspect to it, which, you know, obviously you, you hope that never happens. Um, but I think it's important to have those kind of practices. And I think this is why preseason is important. A lot of people hate preseason. Everyone's like, I'll oh, get rid of preseason. Instead of just jumping right into week one, like, holy smokes, we forgot what it was like to hit somebody that full that full game speed. We forgot what that was like. Um, so I'm really interested to see if Washington will add more, like if it's just the Dolphins or what. Um, they haven't said anything with any kind of training camp schedule yet. I think it's going to come out soon. Um, obviously, OTAs is going on. Um, but I, I, I think that, near the end of OTAs, you're going to start getting more training camp news. It's probably going to be like end of June um, and like go through July. Training camp is actually kind of long. It's There's some that's open to the public, and then there's like some that's not open to the public. Um, but it should come out within the next few weeks. Ideally, it should. It's got to. But like I said, I will absolutely be there. That's one of my favorite things, seeing y'all, seeing the fans, interacting, just being there at practice once again, you know, getting some good, you know, pictures and, and videos and stuff like that of practice, but seeing certain things. Um, and we've already seen a couple of different things and some people have freaked out on some stuff. I've had people DM me certain things. Oh, Josh, did you see this at practice? Um, did you see Forbes is returning punts? You know, shout out uh, one of my buddies DM me. was like, Hey, did you see Forbes running back um, kicks or, and punts or whatever? And I was like, yeah, you know, and I'll have to say, um, Dan Quinn said it today, and I think this is big. I think this is important. Dan Quinn said today that um, don't don't look too into it. Now is not the time for depth chart. Um, now is not the time to think that we know what's going to happen. So, I mean, I have a lot of good ideas for videos and shows I want to do, but I don't want to be irresponsible with them and do it before I have a good idea of what this team is going to look like. Like I want to do a defensive blueprint, um, you know, what to expect kind of, you know, episode. I've done that in the past where I just kind of break down what schemes I think you'll see, what player rotations I think you'll see, who I think will start where. 
But I think I'm going to save that for training camp because training camp, you get to really see a lot of things. Now, Brian Robinson said today that he thinks the offense this season is going to have a lot more no huddle up tempo speed to it. And that's fine. I, I, I think that fits Cliff Kingsbury. And I think that fits Jaden Daniels. I think it fits a lot when you have a, a mobile quarterback, a quarterback that can make you bite because of his legs and he can kill you deep. I know y'all saw that video, Jahan Dotson catching that beautiful pass by Jaden Daniels today. If you haven't, go look it up. There's a great, great throw, great catch. Jahan Dotson's going to break out this year. I, I, and I, and I, I say that reluctantly, not because I don't think so, because breakout. I think he broke out his rookie season. And I think last year was kind of a, a down year. He's talked about it, but he's super excited to have Jaden Daniels here. He wanted Jaden Daniels here. He's like, that's he's like, I don't know if I can say this, but that's the quarterback I wanted. He was super excited. You know, he tweeted about it when we drafted him, like immediately afterwards. He's talked about it in press conferences. He's talked about it, and, you know, working with them. He's like, oh man, this is the guy I wanted. I'm excited about this. I think it's gonna be a total different look um in the offense. And I think we'll actually run the ball. This year as well. I'm excited to see what Austin Eckler brings to the backfield, but also Brian Robinson just picking up where he left off. I think you'll see him more involved in the receiving game as well because he had some big time catches last year. That kind of took me by surprise. As a guy that watched him for four years at Alabama, you know, didn't really get his chance till the last season, you know, really didn't have production until then when he was running dudes over. I mean, that Cincinnati game in the playoffs, holy smokes, killed him. Um, but he never did what he did last year. I think that's the one thing that I took away from the offense last year that I was like, Brian Robinson can catch the ball and he can run up and catch. I was surprised by that. And I'm excited for him and Austin Eckler to kind of get together and team up on that. Um, but I think OTAs is big. And, you know, Austin said it in a video um, the other day that I, I, I was uh, asking him about OTAs. You just say it, it's, it depends on like who you are and where you are in, in your career. You know, if you're a rookie, you're kind of learning things. You're kind of just getting used, you know, Jane Daniels. He, he's getting used to the wide receivers, what, what their habits are, what kind of, you know, routes they run, certain things like that, their catch radius, where you should put it at. But then also just kind of like the playbook. And John Allen said today, he's, John Allen is always the first guy at the facility. He's like, I pride myself in that, but Jane Daniels has been beating me recently and he's like i mean everyone that that talks about Jaden daniels say that they are super impressed with them obviously not perfect um but for right now this guy was looking at the playbook right after he was drafted this guy jumped right into it he's getting to work he, he was getting the throws in he was working on you know plays and, and scheme and stuff like that this guy in my opinion has it and I'm, I'm excited to see what he looks like in practice. I think that's big. Um, but having having an opponent in practice is going to be big for the team, but it's going to be big for, for Jaden Daniels because you're, you're going against one of the top teams in the AFC, Miami Dolphins. And they're, I think their defense is going to be good. They got some really good pass rushers. Obviously, some coming back from injury, but adding Chop Robinson, losing Christian Wilkins kind of hurts. But secondary is good. They got a good linebacker group. Um, I think that's a great out of the three, I would have loved, you know, either the jets or, or the dolphins, but I, so I'm, I'm interested to see if Washington adds another, cause it's just one practice. They're going out to Miami, having a practice together, probably having a day or two off or whatever, and then going to the preseason game. Um, it's not going to be like practice and then game the next day kind of thing at all. Um, so I'm going to keep a lookout on that. And of course, if anything pops up, I'll let y'all know. Um, I'm sure we'll see it on social media as well, but that's it guys. Um, big time front office moves. Washington continues to beef up the, uh, the front office and scouting department with some big respectable names. And then we add the Miami dolphins, uh, for a joint practice in Miami at training camp uh, before the preseason game, which is, which is great. Because then we can go against them in the game, take out some more anger, and uh, see what those backups got as well, and see who's going to step up in a couple different spots. I, I, I'm excited for these practices. Like I said, I'm going to get back to Virginia for a lot of these right away. And who knows, maybe I'll move back within the next year or whatever. We'll see long-term-wise. Like I said, let me get a studio out in Virginia, Northern Virginia, um, settle down out there and just grow this thing as big as possible. So let me know what y'all think. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. 
Um, a little bit more of a show setting. I'll bring some more people on here. Drop your thoughts below on the hirings, but then also the Dolphins adding that in training camp. And what you think is important in OTAs? I posted it on social media, what Austin said about OTAs and the importance of it. Tell me what you guys think about OTAs um, and what you're really looking for in these posts other than the beautiful Jaden Daniels throw. So appreciate y'all. Hit that subscribe button, and uh, I'll be back here on the JTFB show. Peace.